we now continue our discussion of dplyr by looking at two very important tidying up functions called separate and unite. Let's take a look at table 3 that we looked at earlier. So in this table the obvious problem is that the column called rate really has two things jammed into it. One is the number of cases and second is the population of the country. Right? So two different things are jammed into one column and we realize that that's a problematic thing right because we want every cell to contain a unique uh, not a unique value but an atomic value f not further divisible but here we've got two different things jammed into one cell and that's the problem right so what we want to do is to separate this 745 into one column and uh, this 199 million uh, etc into another column and that is easily done by using the separate function so we say table 3 separate and that's the name of the dplyr function rate which is this column so take the rate column and separate it into two columns called cases and population now by default it's going to use any non alphanumeric character as the separator right so in this case the slash character will automatically by default be used as the separator and you'll get the result which looks like this right so you get cases you get population and those two things have now been separated out okay of course very soon we'll see that we can specify the actual separation character to use right by default it does sensible things but sometimes we may not want the default and we may want to control the separation character we can do that okay so you see that uh, the cases has gone into the column called cases and the population has gone into its own column. So as I just pointed out, the separate function by default separates on any non-alphanumeric character. That is a character which is neither an alphabet nor a number. It will treat that as a separator. So that's the default behavior which we use. But of course, as I said, we can specify the separator character explicitly too. So here we might have written the same function as this separate rate into C cases population. Notice that we are specifying the new columns as a character vector. It's cases population and separator equals forward slash. Okay, so uh, we didn't have to do this because by default that was the only non alphanumeric character in that particular column. But if we want to, we can specify it like this. Now, incidentally, the separator doesn't have to be just a single column, right? It can be uh, I'm sorry, uh, doesn't have to be just a single character. It can be a collection of characters if you want, right? So for example, if there is a slash followed by a, a space and you want to get rid of that, so you could say the separator character is slash followed by a space, right? So it, the separator doesn't have to be a character actually. It is any string that you want to use as a separator. And of course, the separator itself does not appear in any, any of the resulting columns, right? So as we saw in the previous example, right? Notice that the slash separator has vanished. It's not in the cases column. It's not in the population column. Okay, so, so that's how uh, the separate function works. There is, however, a slightly subtle issue that goes on when you use separate. So for example, looking at the same function once again, with or without the sep equals, doesn't matter. So if you separate the rate column into two columns called cases and population, this is the result you get. And what I want you to pay attention to is the type of the resulting columns, right? So notice that cases and population are both treated as character columns, okay? This is what happens by default. When you separate one column into other columns, uh, the, the separated result columns are always treated as character columns. Okay, of course, in this case, we know that the resultant things should be numbers, okay, but they turn out to be character by default. So, how do you handle that? Very easy. Just say convert equals true. Okay, this applies to the separate function. So, when you say separate, uh, this time we didn't specify the separator, right? But of course, you can specify the separator if you want. But then all you have to do is to pass an additional argument called convert and say convert equals true. And then you see that uh, uh, the separate function figured out that all of these are numbers and so it can convert them into integers. In fact, it noted specifically that these are all integers. Okay, so that's a useful option while separating. Uh, otherwise, you know, we may run into some difficulty. Okay, once again, just note that the cases and population columns are now converted into integers. 
you also have other options in terms of separating instead of separating based on a particular individual character or a string of characters you can separate at specific positions so here we're saying table 3 separate year into century year and sep equals 2 in this case we are saying if you if the sep argument is a number then it is treated as a position if the sep argument is a character then it is treated as the separation character right so notice how the same argument sep is is doing double duty for us either specifying the characters at which to separate or the position at which to separate so if you do this uh, earlier your uh, year column was you know 1999 etc now we are saying at position 2 separate it and create a new column called century and year so you get 19th century the year is 99 etc and of course as with separate always we've got the resulting columns behaving as characters okay so note the column types of course we can always handle that by using the convert equals true option and once you do that the century and year both turn out to be integers so after this command if you look at the two columns century and year it's been separated and also converted because of the convert equals true option that we specified okay so the opposite of separate is uh, a function called unite as you can guess what unite is going to do is to take the two columns uh, or take a certain number of columns and combine them smoosh them together into one column okay so earlier we had this table 5 I'm creating a table 5 is table 3 pipe to separate year into century year sep equals 2 right so that is what we got uh, and we got now two columns called century and year both of which were character columns now if uh, you want to unite them back into a century column uh, into a year column you can just say table 5 unite new century uh, comma year okay so new is the name of the column okay so table 5 unite new is the new column and century and year are the columns that you want to uh, unite into one column so the result comes out like this which may not be exactly what we wanted right so first of all it's a character column because we obviously are combining two character columns but there is an underscore character which is given as a default okay so the, the there's a separate uh, you know by underscore is used as the uh, as a separator character by default so when it does unite it does leave some traces of what kind of union occurred so we want to see how we can get rid of that by saying again the sep argument suppose we say sep is open quote close quote okay that is uh, empty string then you don't have the separator it just comes out naturally but of course the character type is still there of course the problem of this being a character type is still there uh, unfortunately unlike with separate unite doesn't seem to offer an option to do convert right so there's no direct option to say convert equals true and then unite does the converting uh, I don't understand the logic of that but that's the way it is so if we want to do that then what we are doing is table 6 is table 5 unite new that's the new column century year and then sep equals empty string to say that there should be no separator character and then we convert the new column into an integer separately as dot integer table 6 dot new or dollar new okay so this is we are just converting it into integer by using the function as dot integer okay I don't know exactly why they have not provided a convert option with the unite function there must be some deep reason why they have not done it so after these operations what you get is this column and notice that this is now a proper integer column that's that happened because of the second line of code here where we explicitly converted it